Hello, I'm Shah, and welcome to this presentation on my research project, The Effect of Visual Experience on Processing Word Meanings. Having been born with a severe visual impairment, I was thrilled by the opportunity to work with the blind community on this study of how individual experiences shape the way we interpret the world. Experience teaches us the relationships between concepts that make up our semantic knowledge. However, other sources like language and sensory comparison can also help our understanding of these relationships. But can these other sources yield as rich an understanding as that gained through direct experience? For instance, what might colour mean to someone born without vision? Previous studies used pair similarity tasks to map out the colour concept representations among sighted people. And here you can see the map produced when we use the same approach with our own sighted group. Consistently, sighted individuals' colour space fits the Newtonian colour circle in two major dimensions, warm versus cold and bright versus dark. But what happens with congenitally blind people? Will their representations differ? Previous studies have yielded contradictory results. Shepard and Cooper argue that blind colour space is largely unidimensional, while Marmer argue for greater overlap with the sighted. To date, few have explored how blind versus sighted people represent spatial prepositions, for example, above, below, around and between. Unlike those with vision, the blind rely on tactile and auditory cues to resolve object positioning. So, how does being limited to non-visual input affect spatial concepts? Our investigation addressed these queries by focusing on four case studies, recognizing individual differences rather than making broad generalizations about the blind. Dissimilarity ratings for colour and spatial word pairs were used to plot participants' representational spaces. We also included a qualitative questionnaire which explicitly asked participants about the strategies they used to compare words. Blind participants largely agreed with their sighted peers on colour pairs which reflected common oppositional metaphors within the English language, like black and white. Colours without strong linguistic associations were represented more idiosyncratically among the blind. Our questionnaire showed this was modulated by individuals' engagement with colour generally. For example, a fashion or aesthetic perspective would result in different conceptual pairings than, say, a physics perspective. As many previous studies hadn't considered individual perspectives, this might explain the disagreement observed in the literature. For spatial prepositions, sighted participants applied two clear dimensions, one representing vertical projection and another for containment. Blind participants predominantly overlapped with the vertical projection dimension, for example, above versus below. They showed greater individual variation along the containment dimension, perhaps because these words are more linguistically flexible. For instance, you can be on a train but in a car. Visual imagery was the sighted group's preferred strategy for comparing spatial terms. Meanwhile, blind participants each employed unique strategies. One said that to them, there was no overlap between any of the terms. Something can only be above an object, but not also around it. Another used the word between as an anchor against which all other words were compared. In many cases, blind participants used the same dimensions to categorize color and spatial concepts as the sighted. Hence, language and sensory comparison must be sufficient for rich, detailed knowledge of visual word meanings. However, where clear linguistic metaphors were unavailable, the biggest influences are individual perspective, focus, and engagement with the concepts. Thus, we reaffirm that concepts and word meanings are not abstract symbols divorced from personal experience. We invite larger scale investigations and follow up questions, like whether the uniqueness of one's representational space aligns with functional neural differences observed in the blind. See Bridge and Watkins, 2019. As researchers, we should recognize that everybody experiences impairments differently. Hence, we shouldn't solely make group wide comparisons against fully abled peers. Giving participants the opportunity to self report not only deepens our insights of cognitive processes, but also respects their unique backgrounds. I'd like to give a special thanks to my supervisor Kate and my personal tutor Ayla Baruchu for supporting me throughout the project and of course we are hugely grateful to all our participants for making it possible. Thank you all for listening.